All right, welcome back. So this is the second video, and this time with our narrowband imaging, we're gonna to go to the next level, and we're going to stack two different channels this time, hydrogen and oxygen. And this is actually going to result in an image that looks very much like a one-shot color image. As always, and as tapped with my tutorials, I'm going to go into File, Settings, and we're gonna to return to the default settings, just so that you can see everything that happens. And we're gonna relaunch OzTop once again. Hit the Sigma button, which is gonna bring up our resources palette. And then we'll resize some windows here a little bit. All right, let's browse for those same hydrogen files. Now I actually took some more hydrogen images, so we're gonna add those in here as well. Go to the lights our sharp star, telescope, use the hydrogen files, select those, and then once more we'll go back. And here there's more that I took on another night. Select those, and then we'll go, now we're gonna go get our oxygen files. And the beauty of ASTAP is that there isn't really anything too special about this. We're just gonna basically select our oxygen files, <laughs> all right? So we're gonna open those images. And then here are dark frames. Now I know that I used two different types of cooling settings on the camera when I took these images. We did some negative 20 degrees Celsius work, and then we also did some negative 10. So we're going to capture this time some darks we use 139 gain, 300 second exposures. Here's our minus 20 Celsius. I'm actually gonna grab the master file since I've stacked these once before. And grabbing the master means that it's going to do this a lot faster. And then in here, I'm gonna go back once again. And this time we're gonna grab our negative 10 degrees Celsius. As you can see, here's all the images. We could just select all these and throw these in here, but I have already stacked these ones before, so I'm going to grab the one at the very bottom, the master dark frame, and we're gonna select that, all right? And then we're going to go to the stack method menu, and there's a couple things we're going to do in here. So first off, the red channel, we're gonna to change to capital letter H, and the green channel, we're gonna to change to capital letter O. And we can do the same thing for the blue channel, which will just make it blank, basically. And when it goes blank, that means it's going to use the green channel on the blue as well. And then down here, we're gonna select our light filter classify checkbox. And what this is going to do, and this is the beauty about ASTAP, I love this feature, is it's going to stack both channels and stick them together for us. We don't have to do this separately in another piece of software. It's, it's almost like we're shooting a one-shot color camera here. And then we're also going to select the dark temperature and gain, which means that it's going to sync our dark frames that are taken at negative 10 degrees Celsius with our light frames that are taken at negative 10 degrees Celsius, and also our light frames taken at negative 20 with our dark frames taken at negative 20. <laughs> And it, this really, uh, and other pieces of software, you would have to do all of these separately and then combine them later in on, whereas ASTAP just, we can do them all at once. And we just click the stack button and we wait. So I'm gonna point out one thing to you here. Right now, ASTAP is analyzing our images. And in the previous video, I think we analyzed first and then we went and stacked. When you hit the stack button, it's, it's going to go back and analyze if you haven't done that yet. So it's it, it's a, another nice thing about OzTop. A lot of this stuff is built in, it's automatic. Like here, I can click on the lights tab. And as you can see, it's going through and it's basically finding all of our data and information about these frames and and basically giving us a lot of info. Now I've already stacked these ones before, so I've eliminated all the bad ones and so forth. But yeah, there's a lot of different ways that we can kind of sort our images and find images that we want to remove. For example, the HFD, that's basically your star size. And we could go through and we could 
we could basically sort by that and we could look for stars that maybe are really big or maybe really small and eliminate them basically from the stack so that they don't you know kind of muck up our image and another way you can of course do that is by the overall quality tab which is right here and this is a pretty good general one to start with and you know there's a bunch of other different scenarios here that we can of course sort our images by and the biggest thing of all is to kind of look for outliers you know numbers that are extremely far off from the rest of the group and those usually are going to be problem files and i also of course also do recommend that you just kind of look through every single one that's one of the best ways to make sure that all of your subs are perfect and that will of course give us the best stacked image at the end So ASTAP has started stacking now. Once it finishes analyzing all the images, it will pick two frames from each channel that it thinks are the best, and it will use those as the main reference, which is kind of what everything else will be lined up by. And it will have this little crown right next to its quality number. And then after that, of course, you start to see basically from the the terminal down here that you know it's starting to tell us what it's doing now the big black lines or the big black squares I should say are basically indicating that something's missing and in this particular scenario I'm not doing any flats yet I'm trying to keep the tutorial simpler and if we were to apply flats of course this wouldn't show up and this doesn't change the speed of the processing at all and then of course at the top here ASTAP is going to be telling us at what percentage level it is through its stacking process. So yeah, there's lots and lots that's going on in this interface here and you know it has lots of details that will give us great information about what we're doing. All right, so we're done. And this only took 390 seconds, which is really quite quick. You know, that's just a little bit, that's about six and a half minutes. And down here, of course, it's gonna give us some summary of how many quads were detected when it was basically doing the plate solving to align all the images. And then over here on the right, we kind of see our picture. And this is basically just, just kind of a pre-stretched image that Ostop does. And Astaf has its own, you know, built-in stretching algorithm, essentially. And you can try different levels of stretching right here. These are just kind of presets that are set up. And, of course, there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this. I haven't experimented with it too much, but that's mainly because I don't stretch in Astaf. I tend to do it in Photoshop. But if we did want to just take this image, you know, just very quickly throw it online, we can now do a file, save as like a JPEG, and we'll just save this to the desktop. Really quick here, let's name it NGC7000. And then there's one more thing that I'm going to show you here. There is a results tab, which actually you go back a tab. And it's one of the few scenarios where you go back a tab when you're doing this process. And it will give you basically a summary and also a breakdown of your image. So your image, if you wanted to save just the hydrogen or maybe just the oxygen image as a, like a separate file and maybe do some work or some magic through Photoshop or whatever, well, ASTAP actually allows you to do that and we can double click on any one of these and of course it will bring up that data by itself. And also, of course, it tells us how many files were stacked. You can see here, we had 53 hydrogen files were stacked and then 45 oxygen files. And then on our master one, this is the RGB combination, the bottom one. And it's going to tell us basically how many were used for red, how many used for green. And then of course, how many darks were used. We used 107 total darks in order to make this image. At least that's how many were stacked together in the master frames. And then from that image right there, we can kind of take it on into another process and start working on it in Photoshop. Now here's a, I'll just show you real quick here. This right here is one that was stacked a few minutes earlier.